Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. In this technical short, we take a look at two-part foam. We've invited a rep to our lab to demonstrate a lightweight, disposable two-part unit that might be a good alternative to larger setups for some jobs. Hi, I'm Jed Crawford from EFI. We're here at the WXTV lab. Today we're demonstrating some two-part foam. Uh, what we have here is a small 200 board foot kit. Uh, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to open up both the valves completely open. They're both wide open now. I'm going to demonstrate, just spray a little foam and make sure that I have two equal streams of foam coming out of the end of the gun. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to wipe off the end of the nozzle here. And I'm going to put a tip on here. First we'll start out with the cone spray tip. Here we have the cone spray nozzle. Um, basically this is going to spray a cylindrical pattern. And we'll show you what that looks like. We'll just go around and do a little picture frame of this. Notice that the foam is starting to expand. It's also giving off heat um, while it's doing it. Here at the uh, WXTV lab, we have a prop. Uh, they have the plastic on the back. This is a reusable prop. Um, typically, we won't have an application where the plastic would be on here uh, for better adhesive. They've built a little uh, basement application here as well um, where we have a rim joist application. Uh, we'll just show you the proper technique of uh, properly air sealing a rim joist. We're going to make sure that we get all the seals nice and covered. We're going to come down and overlap a little bit and come back in and fill in. We air sealed where the uh, mud seal meets, um, where the most air would actually leak into the home. Next we'll just demonstrate filling in one of these stud cavities, uh, an e-wall application. I have on the fan spray tip. Uh, this will just obviously spray a fan pattern for filling in larger areas. You don't want to spray the first layer too thick. You can always come back and spray subsequent layers after the fact. Typically, we'd always recommend wearing proper personal protective equipment. And so you can hear me, I wasn't able to wear a respirator. And today, for demonstration purposes, we have a well-ventilated area. One of the most important things uh, with any foam product is it has to be up to proper temperature to cure properly. Uh, that range is between 70 and 90 degrees. Uh, anything lower, the foam product might not mix properly in the nozzle. Uh, it'll come out at a different consistency with the lower temperatures. You definitely want to keep the winter time in, in mind, uh, pre-plan with how you want to keep these things warm. Uh, the manufacturer actually sells a heated blanket um, bag type apparatus. A lot of the agencies are using this in the, uh, the mud sill, sill box area, rim joists, um, knee walls, anywhere that's a real problem area to insulate properly, um, attic air sealing, things like that, any penetrations. Notice that we just sprayed this and it's already setting up, it's stiffening up, uh, it sets up in a matter of minutes. Uh, this side is already cured, we just sprayed this maybe about five, ten minutes ago. Even with the plastic behind there, it's still tough to, uh, to even rip it out. I uh, just wanted to point out the fact that if you stop spraying foam for say 30 to 45 seconds you're going to have to change the nozzle each time. So you want to try to get everything set up as well ahead of time as you can. What I'm doing every time is just kind of wiping off the face of the, no of the gun here and putting a new nozzle, a fresh nozzle on there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to spray one last uh, rim joist here. Kind of picture framing it and then we'll make sure we come over and hit the mud sill area as well. And we can always go back in and, and fill in the rest with a uh, 
a fan spray nozzle or you could just go back with with this nozzle as well. Next we're going to show you uh, the single component can foam um, with the gun application. Um, real simple system to use. You can set the bead diameter by just opening up the knob on the back of the gun uh, and pulling the trigger. I always like to do a test pattern before I spray on my material. You can set the bead size. And we're just going to go in here we're going to fill in a crack. And if we want to do a little larger bead, we just open up the valve a little bit. Typically you're using the uh, single component foam for air sealing as well. Uh, lots of gaps and cracks, penetrations. Um, the one that I have here in front of me is an approved fire block. Uh, some of the inspectors want to see this for electrical penetrations or plumbing penetrations. Uh, one of the most important rules for uh, the can foam is always leave a can on the gun, even if the can's empty, and use the cleaner sparingly. Uh, typically, the only time we use the cleaner is when the, the gun starts to slow down. And then at the end of the day, when you're done, just wipe off the tip and seat the needle. What we have here are just a couple different types of single component foams. Uh, the first one here is an all seasons foam. This one will work as low as 20 degrees and up to 120. Uh, the middle one here is a no warp foam. This one's good for windows and doors. And then of course the approved fire block uh, for penetrations. This is a can a poly clean um, cleaner for when you have to clean the nozzle and the end of the gun. Thank you WXTV for uh, letting us demonstrate the proper use of two component foam. Well that's it for another episode of WXTV. Thanks to Jed for stopping by the studios, and we hope this provided some additional options for your air sealing and insulation needs. Just be sure to watch that product temp closely. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.